before the pay-per-view can actually take place, we go through a whole Dixie Carter segment. She's backstage with Samoa Joe, warning him and denying the fact that she believes he's going to make it through to face AJ Styles to combine both World Eric Championships. And this got me thinking, even though I enjoy Samoa Joe in the tag team scene, you know, being the big guy to put over uprising talent, having him go up into the main event scene, chase the championship again, with TNA's recent releases, we don't really have the best circle of uprising talent, even though there's some X divisions who could possibly get the push, Kenny King, who we just don't see anymore. But until TNA sort that problem out, having big guy versus big guy, top guy versus top guy, would be a great way to go. And to have Samoa Joe back up there, after the matches he's put on in the past, against AJ Styles, Kurt Angle, I think it would definitely be good for probably uh, the interest in the main event scene. Even though right now, we've seen most of the big guy versus big guy, top guy versus top guy. Hence why TNA may be adding stipulations to a lot of these matches. Talk about stipulations. After Dixie's Carter promo about AJ, yada yada yada, I'm ashamed of him, yada yada yada. We have James Storm come out demanding a Florida death. A last man standing match against Bobby Roode. And he demands that match. If he doesn't get it, he's going to go to the police and say about the attack that Bobby Roode gave James Storm at a bar. I think it was before the pay-per-view. Okay, Dixie Carter gives him the match as long as he calls off the police. It's made their match, the two guys who had a hot feud, two guys who should be in the main event scene fighting against each other. It's given us a classic match for these two to be in. So for that reason, good move TNA. In the opening match, we had Magnus defeating Samoa Joe. Two wrestlers who was once a tag team, now fighting against each other. For the World Eric Championship. I was looking forward to this match. Because I know these two. Really hit off well with each other. But the only problem with this match. The match was entertaining. It comes to an end where. Yes I was behind Magnus. Giving support to Samoa Joe. But the steel chair on the middle rope. Samoa Joe running into it. Magnus picking up the win. I don't know how to feel about that. I was hoping, yes, somehow weapons had to be used to take down a big guy like Samoa Joe. But that finish just didn't feel climatic. Like, this is the ending point. This is going to give Magnus the win. It just seemed to have happened. But other than that, it was a good match. Now we get to the obvious part of the pay-per-view, where we had Joseph Parks versus... Abyss. But before we get to the match, the first time in a long time we see Kazarian get his own mic promo. And while Christopher Daniels just looks good in a suit. And they say how they're going to sit at ringside watching this match. And when Chrissy Hem was in the ring with Joseph Parks, she couldn't keep a straight face, which to me hinted that. This is not going to work out. We knew from the beginning this weren't going to work. And when Chrissy Hem starts to call down Abyss, ready for Joseph Parks to prove he's not Abyss and to make a name for himself, it he doesn't come out. But when we had the bad influence getting back to the ring to bully, shall we say, Joseph Parks, they pour blood, yeah, it was blood, onto Joseph Parks. It was like a carry scene, but done, ends more entertaining, obviously. Kazarian Daniels 
the way they could speak on the mic, keep on going, the way Joseph Parks took it, it was a good segment. Entertaining, very bully, and the uh, victim. It does leave me wondering. Yes, it weren't real blood, and you had Joseph Parks just walk out the ring. I'm sure if it was real blood, we would have seen the breakout abyss. But I do wonder which direction or what the outcome of this Joseph Parks and bad influence storyline is. Because without any proper tag team feuds, I guess TNA had to come up with something entertaining, something that's going to keep us interested, something to keep bad influence at the top of the table. And Joseph Parks, well, there to fill in the gaps. But I am interested. As much as I like Gail Kim's open challenge to future divas or knockouts, how many of them are going to be defeated and eliminated before any of them get a contract within TNA or within the WWE? Because right now, the knockouts division isn't that interesting right now. So if Gail Kim is going to continue defeating and possibly eliminating all these potential knockouts or divas, what is that actually going to mean for that division? Unless they do get off a contract because of their performance. But we have Gail Kim defeating Candice LeRae. Quick match didn't really excite me. But it was good to see all these future possible knockouts or divas. Tina bringing in new faces, new wrestlers is all good. But what kind of image or character are they trying to give this artist Sam Shaw? Yes, he does great artwork. That's all good. But to hit on a married woman and for her to give him what he wanted is Sam Shaw going to be a woman stealer even though the beer drinker is not where he should be in TNA his match against Bobby Roode was absolutely great I enjoyed it I liked it the weapon usage was entertaining to watch and it even went as far as Bobby Roode having to bring out a Mick Foley styled weapon which made Gunner come out to throw in the white towel to save James Storm. James Storm was fuming, angry, disappointed. I guess he wanted to be put through the pain to prove they can still continue the match. But we're never going to know what the outcome would have been because of the white towel. What is the future for Gunner and James Storm? Is Bobby Roode and James Storm going to continue? I don't know, but such an entertaining match. Bobby Roode picks up the win because of the white towel. The interesting thing is to continue this possible feud, we still have Bobby Roode and Angle in the tournament together. Talk about Bobby Roode and Angle. On this special Thanksgiving show presented by Dixie Carter, we have Team Angle versus Team Rude. Four on four. And yes, you may mix in a couple of feuds here and there, but I feel the main two to focus on, as Dixie pointed out in her backstage segment, was Angle and Rude. This is one strong feud in TNA, so I'm glad they're trying to stretch it out as long as they can. Drum roll, please. No? Match of the night has to get given to EC3 Ethan versus Shark Boy, the returning legend. This match had everything that defined wrestling. The future, the storyline, the commitment of wrestling... The great spots, the unforgettable moments, great mic work. You know, this is what we paid to see. 
with EC3, Ethan, I'm still waiting to see who his future challenger is. With the whole Carter thing he's got with him, maybe and hopefully not, they're going to push him a bit too fast. And this is where the whole uh, Samoa Joe should come in. A big guy like Samoa Joe who should be putting over the uprising talent or giving us the big guy versus big guy, top guy versus top guy. Samoa Joe versus EC3 Ethan. Book it or not. Or who would you like to see EC3 go after, after he's now beaten a legend like Sharkboy? As much as I could talk about the storytelling, the build-up, the backstage segments, who these two wrestlers are, Bully Ray, the top heel in the company, or one of them, great mic work, the ace Nate's letting him down, and Mr. Anderson, a favourite of mine to go with Buddy Ray, a guy who hasn't had the best time in TNA, who I feel deserved better. I could talk about how great the match was, how great it was to see Mr. Anderson kicking off the match in such a strong way. Mr. And, you know, attacking Buddy Ray before he finished his opener and how they fought against each other, a spear through the table, the ace nates get involved, the uh, outside the ring get exposed. I could talk about this in more detail, but the thing we all want to hear and to know is who won. But all I can say is open the champagne, open the cans of Monster, open your apple juice, drink your milk, because the Ace and Eights are no more. Take off your colours and just relax. People, the future of TNA begins here. The Ace and Eights are no more. TNA, if you dare find a way to bring them back, you need to be slapped. You need to lose some ratings. The Ace and Eights looked good to begin with, but failed quite quickly. Finished them. Done. Now we've got Anderson who beat Bully Ray. Yes, the finish was okay when Brooke... She threw in a hammer instead of sliding it in when Bully Ray was just that far away from her. Yes, okay, whatever, Brooke, you dumb... But, but because of her little mistake, Anderson picked up the win. Very nicely done. The Ace and Eights are no more. Great way to finish. Happy moment. Anderson, a few members of the roster, <coughs> clapping hands, celebrating. Thank you, TNA. Thank you for the finish of this pay-per-view. Now, people, join in with your celebration of this pay-per-view. The matches, the main event, the segments, the future in the comment section below and let's just see what TNA can do now the over stretched ace nates the segment spoiling ace nates are through